Okay, guys, this is the start to a voice in the wind oh, reading vlog. My parents are sitting here, so I feel a little weird. But everyone is so hyped for me to read this. And it's the buddy read for the um, Christian Journey Through the Bible Readathon. So I honestly didn't think I was going to get to it because I've actually been in a slump this month. And I've really not read much at all. But I'm starting it and I have some good friends that are extremely extremely excited for me to read this so I guess I'll let you guys know I'm a crier we all know this at this point if you've been following along and I hear it's an emotional read so I don't know how long it'll take me to read this but it's Monday and it's the 24th of October so I'm going to try to read a good chunk each night after I get off work so we'll see how it goes and I'll keep you all updated hey guys so sorry if this is not the best angle. Please ignore my my hair and my antenna sticking out, y'all. If I don't do my hair, these little babies stick out. Look at them. I can't control them. I'm sorry. Okay, so book update. It's Monday night. I just came at y'all um, and told you a little bit ago that I was starting A Voice in the Wind. I am all ready. And I've been in a slump. I'm not going to lie, guys. I read an amazing book this month. But then after I finish that, and it's the only book I finished this month, I've been in a slump. I am already on like page 55. But for whatever reason, I am so hooked on this. And the preface got me. Okay guys, the preface was making me cry. But I did want to read a part, this is going to be spoiler free, but I did want to read a part in the preface. That just really got me and I also just have to say that when I opened my book and saw Dawn's note to me where she gifted me this trilogy that might have already made me emotional and that's why I cried in the preface. Dawn you are a gem. Thank you. It made me so happy. I won't read the whole preface but I highly recommend like if you're not a preface person you pre preface person you still need to read this okay. So the part that really got me is like in the second paragraph and it says while writing Hadassah's story, I learned that courage is not something we can manufacture by our own efforts. But when we surrender wholeheartedly to God, he gives us the courage to face whatever comes. He gives us the words to speak when we are called to stand and voice our faith. Chills. And I just got chills reading that. God has truly given Francine the gift of words and writing and faith. He has really used Francine and her writing and her faith and love for God to truly be a huge testimony in my life. And then I also have to read this. It says, I hope reading Hadassah's story will make you hunger for the real word, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. I pray that you will finish my book and pick up the Bible with a new excitement and anticipation of a real encounter with the Lord himself. May you search scripture for the sheer joy of being in God's presence. Beloved, surrender wholeheartedly to Jesus Christ, who loves you. As you drink from the deep well of scripture, the Lord will refresh and cleanse you, mold you, and recreate you through his living word. For the Bible is the very breath of God, giving life eternal to those who seek him. Guys, like, I'm about to cry. If that doesn't make you want to go open your Bible right away, I don't know what will. And she says it so beautifully. And guys, I know I'm not even talking about the, the stinking story in this moment, but the preface. It literally, it's just, it's amazing to me. And reading that and knowing that we can literally go. We can open up this book the bible and have a real encounter with the one true god it just blows my mind that we have that privilege and opportunity and we take it for granted so often myself included all the time and that just gets me so fired up to just s set that book down even though i'm loving it and i'm on chapter four set that voice of the wind down and start reading in this and guys that's what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna stop for now reading voice in the wind i'm gonna open up my bible and just 
read it because I just feel the pull. I do. And I'm going to answer to that pull. So sorry to get a little emotional and fired up, but I'm loving it so far. It's very interesting. It was very hard in the first chapter. Um, there's some quite gruesome details on the quality of life and living during that time frame. I think you just, you need to try it for yourself. And if it's too triggersome, you know, don't, don't read it or skip it, I guess. But yeah, so hopefully I'll see you when I'm a little bit further ahead. Okay hey guys, so I am trying to do an update for A Voice in the Wind. Um, it's Saturday night and I think I last updated you on Wednesday. I read a little bit on Thursday and that's when it really picked up for me. Was it Wednesday or Thursday? I was like staying up until 2 a.m. I don't remember. I have really read quite a bit this evening. I'm close to chapter 17. I think that's where I'm going to try to stop. And it is very good. Like, I'm so pleasantly surprised. I was skeptical at first. Um, and I was going to make this spoiler free, but I would like to mention a few things, especially for people that, you know, have read this because I want to talk about it. So, first of all, I don't even know if I said this or if I ended up having to delete the clip, but the part where. Marcus finds Hadassah in the garden at night praying and like her prostrate form to God was just so moving to me and not only the fact that she was doing that and praying for these people and you know after everything she's gone through and the faith that she has in God and then his just his um observation of her really moved me because you know he's like you pray to this unseen god and you your city was destroyed your race has been obliterated and you know all these things and just him observing her in that way of worship and prayer to god was so moving to me and it just touched me so deeply. And I do have to say, like, I don't know if I said in the beginning, but yeah, the first chapter is a little hard just because of some of the um, horrific things that um, these people endured. Even though this is fiction, you know, these are actually things that in history that people endured in these times with the Romans and the Jews and all that. And um, but I think it really does depict what happened. And, um, so far, like, I think the room, it's not really super romancy right now, but I think the way that she has written it to give you the idea of how these people in Rome are and the way they worship themselves, money, um, food, women, all these things, it just really shows you how... Really, those times really aren't much different than what we live in now and how our world loves for us to worship all these things other than God. And um, it's just been really eye-opening. And I really can't wait to see what happens with Marcus and how his journey goes with witnessing Hadassah and her faith and Hadassah, you know, sharing her faith. It's just very interesting. I really love how Francine kind of groups you in. And yes, her book, books are long. And does it discuss really hard things? It does. But it always really hits you in a way that, even though this is historical, biblical times, Christian fiction, that she really touches into emotions that we as human beings truly feel and go through, thoughts and feelings. And we may even be too scared to acknowledge or admit those thoughts and feelings but it's at least one person in this book has this a thought or feeling that each one of us ha has had and she just finds that way to help weave that into for you to relate and then in turn shows her extraordinary talent with 
God and writing God and faith into these books and really helping you to see who God really is through his character through this writing. So I hope that makes sense. I'm very excited to finish it. I don't know how much I'm going to update. I'm getting close to chapter 20 and that's when everybody's told me that I need to film my reaction and that I'll be bawling. So it's been a little, not slow, but I just haven't had too much of like <gasps> reactions. I hope all this makes sense and I'll update y'all probably when I hit 20 and if I'm bawling or not. So you'll see that in the next clip, I'm sure. Bye guys. Hey guys, so it's Sunday night. It's the same weekend that I just updated you on, I think, unless the clip didn't turn out from last night. So I'm almost I'm literally one page away from chapter 20. And Amanda and Miriam both said that I needed to film my reactions for chapter 20. So I'm scared. <laughs> I've been reading all weekend, but I think what it is is just where like the writing style and stuff is just Roman and all that that it just is taking me a little longer plus look how small this print is but sorry for my appearance but this is real life Bailey and you're getting a real life reading vlog so yeah I might stop it finish this chapter and then turn the camera on for when I start 20 so we're getting there guys we might see some waterworks let's get into it guys so I just wanted to update you all so this is going to be the end of my reading vlog for A Voice in the Wind. I was just so enthralled in the ending and finishing that book that I did not film anymore after chapter 20. I didn't cry hysterically like I thought I was going to with the ending but I think part of that was because there was just so much hype and I was just expecting it not the ending because I knew nothing that was going to happen, but I think I was just expecting it to be so good. So therefore it didn't, um, induce a ton of tears from me. I did cry, but it wasn't like, oh, you know, hy hysterically, but I finished it last night on the first. Today's the second and I'm getting ready to film my, um, October wrap up and November TBR. And I just want to come on here finish out this reading vlog. I really cut it down short because I just wanted to talk a little bit more about it. This book just, it went beyond what I thought it was going to be about. Like, and it's funny because most of Francine's books, which I've only, this is my third, so I've only read Redeeming Love and then The Masterpiece, have always ended up being completely different than I expected. And that's how it was with A Voice in the Wind. I talk about some of my thoughts throughout the vlog, like the preface, amazing, and then seeing how this story ends for now in book one, and then going back and reading that preface, wow, it is so moving, and I've had time to think after finishing it last night and then going into today, and I think what I was telling, you know, most of my friends and my mom who read it at the same time as me is... I was just in shock and I think it just never entered my mind what was going to happen at the end so therefore I was in shock I cried but it's just I think part of me wasn't so upset too was because I knew there's like two more books so the second one and the third one and I just I have this hope that what I want is going to happen within those two books and without doing any spoilers or anything or saying anything different than what I already said is this book represents, <laughs> okay, now I'm going to cry. This book represents God and his love for us, for his children, and we may go through, or we will, we will go through 
very difficult, hard things in this world will tell us to, you know, serve this world, serve the world, serve our fleshly desires of money, greed, pride, um, materialism, make all these things our idols. But at the end of the day, the only true fulfillment that will fill that empty void that we so often try to fill with all these things can only be filled by the Lord. He is our ultimate provider. He fills us to the brim of complete satisfaction. And when we can truly believe and, and, ex and accept that and know that it's true, then we will fully understand that. And um, it was a beautiful representation of God is the only, the only true fulfillment and satisfaction that we can ever get. And that we can go through all these hard things in life, but at the end of the day, these things, this world, family, friends, strangers, the only person that is is a constant, that is there always in our times of need and desperation is God. He hears our cries. He knows our fears. He knows every single tear that falls down our face. And it's truly beautiful. Yes, there are some very difficult topics and subjects within this book. It's heavy. Francine doesn't write light. Francine writes heavy, but she's real. She's raw. And you can tell how much time and effort not only that goes into her writing, but the, the background, the nitty gritty, every detail is researched and it's just wow to me. And yes, I can pick this book up and have an experience and encounter with God. But at the end of the day, we can go and pick up our Bibles, open his word that gives us life. It is our, our, our sword. And that is where we truly encounter God, his goodness, his love for us, and his promises to us and his truth. Guys, I hope you pick up this book. I'm not going too much into detail about it just because I want to be spoiler free. I want everyone to know that anyone can read this, believer, non-believer, and get something out of it. I just want everyone to know that if this isn't for you, that's fine. But if you can read this and get something out of it, I pray it blesses you as much as it blessed me. And I hope you all um, enjoy this vlog and I hope it was okay. I've never done a full on dedicated like reading vlog reaction type thing. I promise they'll, they'll get better as the more I do them, but I just want you all to know that we can have an encounter every day with the Lord if we're willing to open up our Bibles and our hearts in prayer to Him. I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for being here. I hope y'all enjoyed it. If you read this, please let me know. Don't put any spoilers, but please let me know. If you want to talk spoilers, message me on um, Instagram. And if you are going to say a spoiler, just like let everybody know beforehand. Um, because if someone hasn't read this, I don't want anything to be spoiled for them. And let's talk about the book below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like? What did you not like? And I'd love to hear how um, it went for you and what you thought. So thank y'all so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Bye guys.